My presentation this morning is called Corporate Dentistry Defined. The devil is in the details. So let me explain that. Last year, I invited Dr. Rick Kushner, who is the CEO of Comfort Dental, to come to Kentucky to speak to my class. He graciously accepted and came from Colorado at his own expense to speak. Rick, I took a course, a couple of courses from Rick probably 15 or 20 years ago. He was on the lecture circuit for a short time and his lecture series was called Lean and Mean. And basically at the time he had I think a half a dozen practices that he was kind of managing partner. Today I think the number is like 300 practices but the principles of marketing and taking, uh, and taking care of people were some of the best principles I've ever learned hands down. Rick has tremendous instincts on what it takes to build a practice and, and uh, uh, take care of people. Now, I'm not pitching his partnerships by saying that. I'm just telling you um, what my thoughts are about, about his body of work. So shortly after his visit, I began to see, this was in dental economics, and this appeared in a couple other places. And basically, it was a comparison of corporate dentistry versus comfort dental, uh, the managed partnerships that he has. And obviously, this is a pitch for his partnerships. That's not what my observation is about, talking about because Dr. Krishner gets upset when he gets lumped into like corporate dentistry and that's not what my comparison is. What really drew me to this article was this and this is his description of what it means to be an associate employee in corporate dentistry and what he has done is he has broken down um, an average income and you know he's putting the average income in corporate dentistry at a hundred grand a year okay where he gets that number I have no idea I would I would imagine as much in circulation he is he didn't draw that number out of midair um, you know I would, students would probably tell me that that's a higher number but and the corporate people would but let's just use his figure as an example okay here's what I want you to take away from this forget about the right hand column let's look at this at a hundred grand a year which is a pretty decent salary in America in general. You have a social security tax of $637 a month, federal income tax of $1666. Right down here, student loans. This is the thing I've been talking about forever. I have been upset about the student loan situation. When I was teaching in the mid 90s, I was harping about student loans. Nobody listened to me because it didn't matter. Well, today it matters. Okay, it matters a lot. So in his example, he's got a $350,000 loan and a $2,800 a month payment. Rent of $1,200 a month, that's a pretty modest deal. You might be still in a basement apartment. Uh, car, $500 a month. And health care, kind of in general, $600 a month. Net, net, net disposable income for you, Mr. Young Doctor, uh, about $879 a month. That's extremely distressing. But see, it all comes down to me right here is that student loan payment. Because I, I think dental education, we're pricing ourselves out of the market like, like nobody's business. So as corporate dentistry grows, and if this, if this is a true reflection, um, this number doesn't work, okay? If, if, I'm, if I'm in college, and I'm getting counseling as far as like what profession I'm going to go into and someone says oh, we're looking at about eight or nine hundred bucks a month to be a dentist I'm gonna say next okay what's the next greatest idea um, so be aware the, the point is this be aware of how these expenses break down taxes you know you're gonna to have to you're gonna to have to do what's called a pro forma on your own personal life and look at this and to me a hundred thousand dollar a year job with that kind of debt level, and believe me, that's, you know, there are lots and lots of students in the 300 range. Now, to make things worse, this is a USA Today article of last month. This is upside down, okay? Every year I come across a handful of students that want to get involved in politics. 
I'm not a politician. I don't like politics because things, things are too slow for me. I can't make things happen in politics. But if you have the desire to do this, and I admire you for the patience and fortitude to do politics, but I gotta tell you something, this is number one. This is the outrage of all time that graduate student rates on a couple of these loans, one jumped up to six point something percent, and the other one went to seven percent. Okay, here's the problem, and you, and you see these these uh, pictures or articles on the internet all over. When, if someone gets into trouble, they get ill, disabled, or whatever, and these things, interest and penalties, jump up 10, 15 percent. You know, you're done. Okay, I mean, at, at 10 and 15 percent interest, these types of loans will eat you alive. Okay, here's my point. My point is the graduate students to me, and I'm not talking about undergraduate, the graduate students to me have pre selected. They have said, I'm going to go above and beyond to make myself someone special. Okay, to me, they deserve as good of interest rates as the market can bear. And to me, farmers are getting 3% money all day. Graduate students need 3% money. Look what that would do to that expense. So, back to my point. If you want to be in politics, this needs to be, I, I don't see students using social media like they should to address this issue right here. What is the very best market rate available? Why would graduate students pay more than undergraduates? You should have the primo primo rate in existence, which today you should be 3%. Okay, That affects your future tremendously. A little bit off topic, but what led me to that observation was Dr. Kushner's article about the expenses, the fixed expenses that you have when you graduate, and a huge part of that is the student loan situation. So, don't have the answer to it, but I want to make you aware of how, number one, I think it's tremendously unfair uh, and this is, okay, so I have one more slide for you. The word of the day, I want you to know what the word usury means. Add this to your dictionary if you've never come across it. Usury is the illegal action of lending money at unreasonably high rates. Student loan rates for graduate students, to me, is the definition of usury. And I think it's, uh, I think it's unethical, I think it's outrageous. And uh, you have my sympathies, and that's why I'm doing what I can to help you navigate um, what's ahead of you. Thank you.